You wanna feather off the edges first and then come in on your side. Hey guys, Brad here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to get that perfect mud joint every time and what tools to use. But there's one trick. There's a tool, this one right here, which is the key to getting that perfect joint. The way I'm gonna show you is if you're a beginner at this and you wanna have a flawless job, this is sort of a, a cheat. I wish I had this tool years and years ago, and that is basically a level five skimming blade. You can get these in all different sizes. I'm gonna show you how to use this. Now, this is a 12 inch blade, which is what I typically use. And you can also get trowels like this. I don't use trowels that often, so I'm not very good with them. I tend to stick more with this style, but these are a game changer. And I'm not a professional drywaller. I don't do this all the time, but I have done it a lot, especially in renovations. I'm always mudding and taping. So let's get to it. I'm gonna do a butt joint and a tapered joint, and I'll show you the difference between the two. So this video is really geared for that beginner who is looking to be able to do mudding and taping themselves, you know, and, and really don't wanna hire somebody. So this is a way to do it, to get that perfect joint. You gotta spend a few bucks to get one of these, but you're gonna thank me in the end. It's such a game changer. For starters, you need some mud. Now my mud is actually a little bit runny, so I'm hoping that we're gonna be okay, but uh, it was kind of end of the bucket, so we'll give it a go. If not, I'm gonna have to redo this whole video. So when you're mixing your mud, a lot of times you wanna add water. The mud I'm using is this Light Line product. It's a light finishing compound. You can use the Blue Box or the General Purpose mud if you want, but this stuff's better because it does sand really nice. So you wanna have it you know, watered down a little bit especially even if you get the general purpose mud, you wanna water that down as well and you wanna mix it. You don't wanna just be pulling mud straight out of the bucket and putting it on the wall. You definitely wanna have a mixer and really mix it up so you get that nice creamy, frothy kind of look to it. So first off, let's just apply some mud on the wall here and I'll show you how you do it with a 12 inch blade and then I'll show you how to do it with the level five. This is just a typical butt joint and you just wanna take your mud, all right, and apply it, just like that. Okay, you wanna get it on the wall, and you wanna go a little wide as well. Now this is just my first coat. You can see right here, see this line? That's called a hitchhiker. What that is is sometimes you pick up a little piece of dust off the ground or something, and it'll make a line all the way up. So you wanna avoid those. Basically with a trowel like this, you wanna feather off the edges first. Okay? And then you wanna trowel out the middle. Now this is where it gets hard with a trowel like this because you've got your edges. Now, you might end up with a little bit of edge along the side. So you wanna trowel it out and then come in on your side. The other thing too, is you wanna make sure you don't add too much mud. So first coat, not bad. You can see a little bit of flash through there of the tape, but not too bad first coat. This is very sandable. So you come back later, just give it a quick sand, and then you're ready for your final coat. That's easy for me. This isn't perfect like a professional drywaller would do. He'd probably do a way better job, or she. But for me, this is really good. All right. All right, guys, if you're liking the video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, hit that notify bell. And if you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. If you think I can do better, definitely leave a comment. But if you have any questions, honest questions about how to do this, how to improve or anything like that, I'd be happy to help. So love to hear from you. So now I'm gonna show you with the level five how much easier it is so you don't get these joints. Because a lot of the times people don't have the the pressure down in their hand. When they're, when they're doing the middle, they might go too hard and then you start digging it out and you get weird lines and everything. So I'm gonna take this mud off. Okay, and that's the beautiful thing about mudding. You can just take it off and start over again. You don't want to, but you can. So let's do this again. But this time I'm gonna apply the mud 
really messy like like as if I kind of don't know how to operate one of these okay well that's hard actually because <laughs> I do know how to operate it so we'll just sort of slap it on there okay I'm not very good at it let's say we're just kind of slapping it on doesn't look very good right okay Go like that. So when you're doing butt joints, you want to be really wide. You don't want to just do 12 inches because you want to be able to taper this out all the way. So I just grabbed my 32 inch skim blade and you can see it's wider than the actual area that I taped and mudded. So all you got to do is grab it like this, both hands. Okay. And you have to go over it a couple times. You want to start at the bottom. And just trowel up. See how flat that is? Now you can see I got a hitchhiker all the way. So what I'm gonna do is you take the mud off and we'll just hit it one more time. I got a little bit of a hole right there. So again I take this mud off and I can just pop it back on there. Okay, remember I don't know what I'm doing. If I want to put more mud on there, oh, I would just want to add a little bit to some hollow areas. You can just do that. And then just hit it again. And there you go. See how flat that is? So much easier than using a 12 inch trowel. Now you can see down here, I got a little bit too much mud. So I'll just hit it again. And there you go. So this is first coat. Second coat is even better. Before I recoat this, I'd sand off any of my, you know, imperfections. I'm getting to the point now where I'm taking too much mud off. But you can see such a huge difference on butt joints. And butt joints are really, really hard to do. So up here, I got too much mud. Okay, just take it off. So what a butt joint is, is where you've got two ends of drywall meeting together. They don't have a tapered joint on them. So this is the horizontal side. So this sheet is laid horizontally and we have a taper right in it. So when you put the two tapers together, that's where you put your tape. And then if you hold your trowel up like that, you can see the light right in behind there. And that's the void we're going to fill. So tapered joints are a lot easier to fill than butt joints. Butt joints you need to expand that line, you know, two feet. Otherwise you end up with a real hump on the wall. So that's why using something like this, that's a 32 inch blade, you're going to guarantee that you're going to be wide enough so that you're not going to have these weird humps. Now, if it's really bad, you can go even larger and you could come out here, 32 inches or 24 and come out over here on either side. So you're really, feathering this out. So you're going to want to feel it when you're done with your hand. You want to feel if there's any bumps. You want to take your trowel. You want to put it on the wall, see if you've got any big divots or holes. And then when you prime it, that's when you know if you've screwed up or if you've done a good job. With the taper joints, these are a lot easier. You don't need to be using a 32 inch trowel for that. You can get away with just a 12 inch. Or if you don't want to use this and maybe you're finding it's a little bit hard, let me show you. If you take your 12 inch, put it on there. Just a little disclaimer, I would never use a 12 inch on my first pass. I would use probably a 10 inch and then I'd use my 12 inch for my final. But just for examples here, come at it with a 12. Now, come at it with some mud. See, it's really sloppy. It's dripping everywhere. You can just clean this up just like that. But what you want to do is feather that back. See how I feather that back? It makes it easier to sand. You never want to leave it looking like this because this is impossible to sand. So you want to push down on the outside and just hit it lightly like that. 
A lot of the times I will use a six inch blade to just feather that out, it's a lot easier. And then you can come through and just do that. And that's ready for sanding. However, if you don't want to use this and you want sort of the cheat, then what you do is add your mud. Okay, add my mud, it's not very pretty. And then I would grab my 24 inch skin blade. There's other brands out there, it's not just level five that makes these. All the brands make these different types of skin blades. And then you'd come at it like that. See, because it's wider than the actual mud area, I didn't have to feather out the edges. So anytime your blade is exceeding the mud itself, you really don't have to wipe it down first. So that's a huge benefit to using a blade that's larger than the actual surface area that you've applied your mud to. So this is pretty much flawless. I can come back, second coat this later. Again, I'd add it with the 12 inch and then I'd come over it with this, wipe it down, perfect. Now when I sand, I barely have to sand it, okay? The idea is less is more. So you wanna put on as little mud as possible so that when you're sanding, you don't have to sand more, okay? Now when you're sanding, that's a whole other video which we're going to be doing, but my favorite sander is something like this, okay? This is just a extension pole, but this is the money end right here. These are foam pads, they Velcro on, and these are great. So we're going to do a whole video on sanding and different sponges and, and different ways to sand things, so make sure you check that out. But for now, this is by far the best way to get flawless joints if you're a beginner or a DIYer. Not for the professionals, they know what they're doing. They still use these, don't get me wrong, but this is a great way to just not have to hire a professional and, and just do it yourself. These things are awesome. They really do take away a lot of the issues that I see going into a homeowner's house where maybe they've done the mudding themselves and you can look down a wall, especially one like this where you got windows and you can see all this light, you really want to make sure you've got perfect joints. It's the light that shows the bad work and it's really hard to tell sometimes if your work is good until you prime it. So it's all about priming it and then you'll see where you forgot to sand or maybe where you just have too much mud. Final notes, I guess. Less mud, you can do multiple passes, you can go back and do multiple times. You don't have to just do the two coats, you could do three coats, four coats. Just keep working it until you get used to the feel of it. Don't try and load too much mud on at once. Just a nice clean pass, keep it thin and you'll be okay. The other thing is on your butt joints, like your vertical butt joints, you wanna go at least 12 inches on either side, minimum, at least 12 inches. And that's where something like this, a 32 inch is really, really handy. You can get even bigger ones. I have a four foot one as well. We're also gonna do another video. I'm, I'm doing a whole series guys on mudding and taping because we're doing this big job. You can also do level five, which is a category of finish on a wall. It's not just the brand. So level five is where you coat the whole wall in mud and then you trowel it down with his skin blades. So I'll show you how to do that in another video. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notify bell. Until next time, keep on crushing it, and we'll catch you later.